John here doing another video by myself, doing another video, tired as a dog, but hey, the show must go on. So what I want to talk about this time are my guitars. Take a look. See them right here? This one. See that one right there? That is my bass six. It is a jazz master, right? It's a Squire model. Interesting that one of my favorite guitars on planet Earth would be a Squire. If you would have told me that when I was starting out, I would have never believed you, but here we are. That is a really cool guitar. Um, let me grab it while we talk about it. It is a really cool guitar. It is a 30 inch scale. All right. A little bit different than the standard scale guitar. Quite a bit longer, 30 inch scale. It's almost a bass guitar. So what I mean by the scale is the distance from the strings here off the bridge to here, the nut before it goes to the tuning keys. So this is a 30 inch scale. It's basically a bass. Okay, that might be difficult to hear on here, so I will provide some different sound samples here in a minute. But this bad boy, I have tuned to E, drop E, so it's like a four string bass guitar. Super fun, super heavy metal, super amazing. I installed uh, this P90 style uh, pickup. It's actually a hybrid pickup. It's got a rail pickup and a P90 pickup in one. It's pretty cool. I like the tones you can get out of this thing. inspired me to want to do this video is just kind of take you through some of the things that you know I use on a regular basis that are pretty cool like my favorite guitars essentially you know so this one here is an eight string electric guitar that I've had for many years now it's one of my favorite guitars that I own it um, plays and feels incredible now this is a 27 inch scale guitar so from the bridge to the nut is 27 inches. Um, it's okay. I would prefer that it would maybe be 28 inches, maybe a little bit longer, but the playability is pretty comfortable if you leave it in standard F sharp. So this note here, it's an F sharp, pretty cool guitar. Um, it is a lot of fun to play. The neck is kind of wide. So while this one is long, this one is wide. And um, the guitar is very nice. The core wood, the body wood, I should say, is swamp ash. And this top is what's called a figured claro walnut. The neck is ebony. It's an absolutely beautiful guitar. Plays really, really, really well. I'm looking at it in the viewfinder here. I gotta, gotta look at it. It looks good on there. Um, I really enjoy this guitar. This guitar I've played um, when my band went and played in Germany and in the United Kingdom, I got to play this. So this guitar is pretty special to me. I've written quite a few songs on it. Really enjoy it. Now, what makes it different than the things that I could do with this is this is tuned really, really low. This note is really, really close to that. But because I have more strings and I have higher fret access and get all the way up to this 24th fret here, I can play really big, like five octave arpeggios with this thing. Pretty cool. So it adds like a little bit of a different um, abilities and uniqueness to the way that you could write with this. This inspires me completely different ways than this inspires me. This is like a caveman guitar, that one there. Or there you go. That's like a caveman guitar. And this is a little more like, a, I don't know, a katana or something like that, right? A little more precision. So let me take you over to this guitar. And show you this. This is a mahogany guitar, I believe. Oh, the body is walnut and the neck is mahogany. And then it has a ebony fretboard. And this is just a little bit longer it's got a special Evertune bridge. It supposedly stays in tune, always. It's pretty handy. Um, I don't know that I would get that on all my guitars, but it's good to have on one of the guitars. And um, 
what's neat about this guitar is it's like an inch longer than the uh, standard scale electric guitar. So it holds tunings pretty well. And so the scale length matters because, and then why I pointed it out on these and then this one, is because the size of your strings that you can use, you can get away with using littler uh, string gauges, smaller string gauges, and it still can hold a lot of tension with lower tunings. So it's pretty neat, it adds, it adds another layer. So this guitar is just an inch bigger. So technically, none of these guitars that I use on a regular basis are a standard scale. Um, I've pretty much been an extended range, extended scale player for, I don't even know, almost the whole time I've played guitar. I've been interested in seven strings and eight strings and recently really started to get involved in baritone uh, six string guitars. I got a pretty cool one coming. I can't wait to share some stuff about that um, from this guitar builder. But um, yeah, super stoked to get that and mess around with, you know, baritone. This is something just in really speaks to me, it is inspiring when the tone is a little bit lower. Even though I do have this guitar set up in standard tuning, I kind of just wanted a guitar to have around to where I can play it in standard tuning, something I could pick up and play Metallica and Megadeth on and just jam on pretty standard uh, tunes and, and keep things a little easy. I also like to teach guitar with this guitar since it's in standard tuning, it kind of helps. And these giant block inlays, whereas this guitar here does not have uh, any inlays, it makes it kind of difficult for the student to see, you know, what fret I'm on. So if I say third fret, you can see that I'm, in, I'm on this giant block inlay right here. And that, that kind of stuff. It's one of the reasons I got this guitar. Also, I just really like the aesthetic. And when they're all sitting next to each other, they look like a nice little set, a complete set. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut to some shots. Um, and some samples to give you an idea of what these different instruments sound like, give you an idea of, you know, the different tones and ideas that I can come up with out of this. Check it. You got that heavy, thick, basic tone. Really nice, low tune, love it. This is the isolated guitar, so you're hearing hard left, hard right basics distorted through a guitar amp that is the bass tone so i use the same instrument for the bass guitar track and the guitar rhythm full band kicks back in nice So what you hear here is this is the H string, tuned to F sharp standard. It takes you through one of those five octave arpeggios that I was talking about. Now this one might only be four, but you get the idea. A little bit different, still heavy, but you know it's got those high notes. Pretty cool. Now you got a chug boy here. This is your standard tune, six string guitar. This is tuned in E standard. Just heavy. Still heavy, you know, even though it's got a higher tuning, smaller strings. There's the isolated tone to give you an idea that you can contrast and compare with the isolated section from the H string, um, even though it's just the high notes, and then the isolated section of the bass six. Give you an idea, some variation in tone. I think a guitar player would really be able to tell the difference. So that's it. That's kind of the tone showcase. Give you an idea of what the instruments that I play uh, guitar-wise and how they uh, vary from each other. So there we have it. Wanted to do something a little more in depth, a little more involved for this vlog. I had fun showcasing the different instruments. So to recap, you heard the bass six, you heard bass six isolated rhythm guitar tone. You heard the bass six as a bass guitar, um, isolated. Then I played the H string and you get to hear some 
big arpeggios on the eighth string, played with some heavy rhythm so you get an idea how versatile and fun that instrument can be. And then I played the standard tune six string guitar, uh, just an E, E-A-D-G-B-E, -E, the way you get it out of the guitar shop and uh, showcase that that can be heavy too, you know. All of the rhythm guitar tones that you hear and all of the bass track tone that you hear is the same amp sim um, that I use through my multi-effects processor. I didn't change anything. I didn't change any settings at all. The EQ settings in my uh, digital audio workstation were the same. I used the same drum tones, the same mix. So that's a pretty, pretty much just, hey, swap the guitar out and roll with it type of a comparison. To give you an idea, um, the subtleties yet to a uh, well-trained ear and to a certain musician that'll be pretty evident the differences in those three instruments but anyways i had a lot of fun making this one there's more content to come friday we got another chat cast stay tuned